Hi there, my name is Elena Sharp, and as a part of my EDU 429 class, I'm going to give you a visual of what the multi-tiered system of support looks like at Western High School. In order to get started, I consulted the Michigan Department of Education's website to get their definition of a multi-tiered system of support. According to the site, a multi-tiered system of support is an integrated, multi-tiered system of instruction, assessment, and intervention designed to meet the achievement and behavioral health needs of all learners. It also identifies five clusters for the successful implementation of a multi-tiered system of support in Michigan. These are listed below. In Tier 1 at Western High School, I believe that we implement all five of these clusters of effective implementation of a multi-tiered system of support. For example, teachers are one of the stakeholders in Tier 1. Teachers use best practices that they've learned from district-provided PD and other opportunities in order to instruct and intervene in their own classrooms. They also use the data and assessment pieces they've collected in their own classrooms. These curriculum-based measures, such as standards-based grading, learning targets, project-based learning, and formative assessment measures can be used to identify if students are struggling in their own classrooms. Their grades can also be communicated to their parents and families who are another one of the stakeholders in a tier one multi-tiered system of support. Our school district has purchased PowerSchool so that parents and students may see at any time how they are faring on their assessments, learning target objectives, and other measures of achievement in their students' classrooms. Furthermore, administrators are in on Tier 1 as well. They are looking at data such as student grades at any point in the quarter and helping teachers provide the support that they need to students within their own classrooms. They are also providing teachers an opportunity to meet weekly, what's called an early release, one hour on Wednesdays, and teachers at that point can talk to each other, to counselors, and to administrators about what they are seeing in their classrooms and problem solve for what they can do to better need the meets, meet needs of their students. In Tier 2, the same stakeholders are also involved, teachers, parents, administrators, and counselors, and of course the students. In Tier 2 at Western High School, we again implement the five clusters of effective implementation of a multi-tiered system of support. Specifically, we do this through what's called power play. In power play, counselors, administrators, and teachers identify students who are struggling in their core classes. Then, these students go into a special instruction and intervention piece where teachers can better differentiate instruction to meet their needs. Parents are aware of this selection into an intervention period, and students can work at catching up or learning what they don't know. So their curriculum-based measures, again, are these formative assessment pieces or learning target objectives that their teachers identify, and then they use that data and assessment to either keep them there and improve instruction in a certain area, or if students are um, meeting meeting the objectives and they can be moved to another area where they're struggling or they can move back into a tier one kind of situation. So that power play is very unique. It's one hour a week on Wednesdays and it's a flexible scheduling. So once students, like I said, once students are meeting their objectives, they can be moved out of that. Um, but it's a really great opportunity for students who are struggling to get some extra help. And again, that's identified by teachers, counselors, and administrators, but it can also be requested by parents, and parents are aware of and involved in um, knowing that their students are in a certain power play. And finally, a Tier 3 intervention would have these same stakeholders, but this time they're all together on one team, meeting specifically for one student. So our student success team is made up of a teacher, a special ed representative, either a special ed teacher or a teacher consultant, a counselor, an administrator, and a parent. And they all meet to decide the best course of action for a student who is really struggling. Now for instruction and intervention, um, this might now be a more formal um, looking at the curriculum itself, like perhaps a student needs to move to an online based for credit recovery. 
Um, perhaps they need to actually have their schedule modified so they're in a different class or classes dropped. Now, data and assessment might also take a more formal approach. Those curriculum-based measures may no longer just be formative or um, kind of a classroom base, but might be more of like a special ed um, screening or a psychological-based screening. Again, the parent is involved, so that stakeholder, that parent is a part of that process, and it's a problem solving as a team. So I think we, I think we definitely have some good measures in place for our tier three interventions. Now, I did want to mention that um, I consulted the Michigan.gov website to get Michigan's definition of a multi-tiered system of support, and to identify those essential component clusters there. I would say at Western High School, I feel that we're doing a very solid job in our Tier 1. And if there was any place that we could really stand to improve, it would definitely be in our Tier 2. That power play is great, but it's only once a week. And it feels a bit disjointed, to be honest. We have the Wednesday opportunity to meet with other teachers in our own content area, but I would like to see something more regular in place. Um, so that we can kind of streamline what that intervention looks like, what that time with our student looks like. And indeed, that's what we're going towards. We're going towards a daily tier two, where now all teachers are going to have a smaller class size of those students, so they should be able to give them more attention, and there should be more time to see what's going on and give them that truly differentiated instruction. Perhaps this would be more time to give some more formal curriculum-based measures in that time instead of it being anecdotal and formative assessment-based. could be more of a standardized process. I'm not sure I'm really crazy about that idea, um, and I, I'm, I don't really see it as a deficiency that we don't have a lot of standardized testing in place, um, that our school does trust our teachers to kind of collect the evidence on their own. So thank you for listening. Um, it was very interesting to compare these components with what our school is doing. Very eye-opening. Have a great day.